Now we will study the second thermodynamic process and that thermodynamic process is adiabatic. In adiabatic process here we have a cylinder and a piston and this is our system on which the process will take place. So during this process when volume is increasing, decreasing, heat is entering, temperature is changing, during all this what type of material we have used here. So here what we want to keep constant so that it is known as adiabatic answer the heat content in the system should not go out and it should not allow from outside to come in. So heat transmission is not there therefore we use a cylinder and piston which is adiabatic that is insulated. If it is insulated then transmission of heat transmission of heat is not possible. So that does not take place. What are the other things? Pressure, volume, temperature. It may change. But what will not change? Heat will not change. If there is such a process that process will be known as adiabatic. So here heat content remain constant P, V and temperature T may change. Okay. Then this is a slow process. No. Invert to isothermal properties this is a quick process we do not during these changes p v during the changes of pressure and volume we want to keep it very quick so that it does not get time for heat to go out whenever the pressure increase heat will be generated when heat is generated temperature will rise and because the temperature has risen, the heat will try to go out. By the time it goes out, before that, again there is an expansion. So, due to expansion, the temperature comes down. Now, heat will not go out. So, before it goes out, we change the pressure and volume. So, adiabatic processes are quick. Isothermal process were slow because we wanted to give it time to, for heat to go out. In adiabatic, we keep it quick process. How is the container? The container wall. The container wall is insulated and what do we call such wall in thermodynamics? Adiabatic wall. So, the walls means from all the sides including piston everything should be insulated adiabatic so that heat cannot go out it will not leak out. Then equation of this process the equation of isothermal process was P into V as constant but in adiabatic we find that P and V to the power 1 1 is not there here. P multiplied by V to the power gamma is constant. What is this gamma? So gamma is ratio of two specific heats of the gas. Which are the two specific heats? Specific heat at constant pressure and specific heat at constant volume. The ratio of Cp, Cv is gamma. And that is the constant for every gas. For diatomic gas, there is one value of Cp upon Cv. For monoatomic, one. For triatomic, there is one. And this ratio gives gamma. So, the equation for adiabatic processes, P, V to the power gamma is constant. Then, indicator diagram. Indicator diagram, okay. I make here both the indicator diagram so that we can differentiate between the two. This is P and V. Again, P, V. One I will make for expansion and one for compression. 
Okay. In this, I make two lines, one for isothermal, one for uh, adiabatic. In isothermal, we have already studied when volume is increased, pressure decrease and this is the graph for isothermal. Now, volume started less, increased more, that is why we call it expansion, but how to show it, we will put arrow here. This arrow shows the process start from smaller volume and it has gone to the larger volume. Okay, this is expansion isothermal. Now, how it will be for adiabatic? Here we find that volume has a power which is more than 1. So, volume decrease very sharply. Volume decrease very sharply in isothermal. It was P proportionate to 1 upon V to the power 1. This P proportionate to 1 upon V to the power 1 in isothermal and to the power gamma in adiabatic. So, gamma is always more than 1. If it is more than 1, then V, P will decrease very sharply. So, we get a graph here. This is for adiabatic process. Adiabatic. So, this is graph for adiabatic and uh, I will correct it because it should always be inclined this way. So, there should be no doubt. Let us make it this way. Okay. So, but the slope is more in adiabatic. So, please remember this is adiabatic and this is isothermal expansion. Now, in the compression, the initial volume is large and when we compress it, the pressure increase, the volume decrease. Pressure increase, volume decrease. And here we have these two graphs. One is this and one is this. Which one is the one? Here again we have this is, ah, let us make it the other way. Let the starting point be same. That is, one is this one, other is this one. Here, which has got larger slope? This is slope fast, increase fast and this increase slow. So, this is isothermal. And here, for a small change of volume, you see, for change of volume, this pressure change is small, this pressure change is more. And we know that where pressure change is more with the volume, that is adiabatic. So, this is adiabatic and this is isothermal, this is for compression. But in both of them, one thing is common which you should remember, that is the slope. The slope is more in adiabatic slope is less in isothermal whether it is expansion or compression it appears reverse because here is the starting point here is the starting point doesn't matter this slope is large here this slope is large so larger slope adiabatic okay these are the indicator diagram then application of first law the application of first law of thermodynamics that says that when heat delta Q is given, it is change in internal energy plus work done. This is first law. This is how the heat is used. Now, in adiabatic, what does not change? The heat contents remain constant. So, the change in heat is zero. No change is equal to delta U plus delta W. Now, this gives us one thing that is delta W is equal to negative of delta U, internal energy. What do we write delta W equal to? Delta W is P into delta V. 
is equal to minus delta u. What does this mean? How do we know that internal energy has decreased? The indicator for change in internal energy is its temperature. If internal energy increase positive, the temperature is increasing. If internal energy is negative, that means the value is coming down, that means temperature is coming down. So this says the gas is cooling. T going down and the gas cooling. What when this happens when there is a P into delta V positive. Positive delta V is what? Increase in the volume. Whenever there is an increase in the volume, the temperature goes down in adiabatic process. Whenever there is increase in the volume, temperature goes down. Want to see this? Have air in your mouth. It is at a temperature of 37. Your body is at a temperature of 37 and make it. If you make this, the air expands. The volume increase. What happens to temperature? It goes down. That's why you feel cool here. So, that is example of getting cooling. The same thing happens in refrigerator. In refrigerator, there is expansion. Inside the freezer, the gas comes through a capillary tube, very small bore, and suddenly it is allowed to expand in a larger bore tube. So, the gas goes like this, the volume increase many times. When the volume increase, there is a fall in the temperature and it becomes very cool, less than 0 degree. And that is how refrigeration, air conditioning, all these machines are work on this principle. This is adiabatic expansion. So, what is the cause of cooling? Adiabatic expansion is one cause of cooling wherever we expand it. Suppose a tire bust out, then suddenly all the air molecules, the volume increase. When the volume increase and their temperature will go down. Of course, we don't feel it because air mix up very fast. So, this is application of first law on adiabatic. This gives us this principle. Okay. Now, how much is the work done in it? The calculation of work done can be done by two methods. Number one, adiabatic curve, make the graph here. In compression, so much work is done, yes, this much. Adiabatic curve, in the compression, so much work is done. In expansion, so much work is done. Adiabatic curve. P multiplied by change in V, P multiplied by delta V, that is work done, work done. So this is the one process of getting the work done calculated and there is another process, mathematical process that we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.